Chers auditeurs, Dear listeners, bonjour. Welcome in Comme d'Archi Podcast Season 3. Saison 3 dans le monde fascinant des architectes. And in the architectural projects. Je suis Anne-Charlotte de Ponte, passionnée d'architecture et docteur des universités en histoire de l'archi. I am one of the spokespersons of Anne Charlotte, who is a PhD in architecture history. Merci. Thank you. D'être avec moi aujourd'hui. To be with us today. Et and maintenant, now, lundi en français, place au talent. And Wednesday, let's talk projects. In English, of course. Bienvenue dans Comme d'Archi. Dear listeners, good morning. This is Esther on behalf of Anne Charlotte. It's good to meet you again in season 3 of Comme d'Archi, episode 71, with an architectural project by Alta, the Jean de La Fontaine School in Tours, France. Alta office is located in Rennes and managed by Maxime Le Trionnaire and Gwenaëlle Le Chaplain, both architects. Jean-Louis Violo, sociologist, tells us about them. If architects want to avoid parading around in a flowery universe, they must take on the resistance of reality. To do this, Maxime Le Trionnaire and Gwenaëlle Le Chaplain combine contradictory properties within Alta, between freedom, diversity and mastery in the wake of their reassuring elders, Jean-Luc Le Trionnaire and Alain Tasso. There is in them this inexhaustible quest for the mastery of an impalpable thing, how to imagine the social relationships that can be woven within a space that one inhabits. Even if everything is planned, life and its avatars will inevitably interfere with it on a daily basis. The history of the project is narrated by the architects. The project of the reconstruction of the kindergarten Jean de La Fontaine is the result of a competition launched at the end of 2020 by the city of Tours. The tender documents have just been submitted, the construction will begin in September 2022 and will be completed in 2024 by the renovation of the existing gymnasium. This is a landmark project for our agency, which represents a pivotal time, including the evolution of architecture today and what it represents. Urban Context The demolition and reconstruction of the school of the 60s is part of a complex urban context and in full mutation in the northeast of the city of Tours. The district is characterized by the heterogeneity of the buildings, which marries several scales and typologies of habitat and functions. We also find in the district projects made up of very diverse materialities. The city of Tours is part of a strong vegetal environment, marked by its waterways, wooded hillsides, vegetated areas, numerous parks, properties and allotments. This green and blue framework, enhanced by the development of public spaces and gardens, was an important axis to take into account in the requalification of the urban fabric. Although the project site is not in the immediate vicinity of the waterway, the heritage of the landscape and the architectural heritage of the Loire and the Cher is an element that we felt was important to take into account in the project. During the site visits, we were able to realize that the school group is both an educational and pedagogical landmark for the children but also a public equipment at the scale of the district able to be open to its inhabitants apart from the school times. City stadium, after-school center, multifunctional room of the nursery school, gymnasium, etc. Therefore, it seemed important to us to give a clear legibility to this school while inscribing it as a place of refuge. We wanted to have an architectural style that combines both the public equipment while being inspired by the spirit of the cabin. This universe refers to a rich imagination but also maintains a direct relationship with nature. In connection with the heritage of the Loire, this new equipment refers to the barge of the Loire, the cabins of the allotment gardens, very present in Tours, or more generally to the self-built cabins close to nature. This choice allows us to propose an architectural language adapted to the users, a marker of an early childhood school. We decided to work on a project that synthesizes the urban and landscape intentions of the neighborhood and the city, enriched by a singular atmosphere of nature in the city, a territory of sharing and exchange in which it is sweet to live together and in good understanding. This city fragment is imagined as respectful of its heritage, sustainable, more open, more porous and adapted to a young public. Landscaping Approach 
The Phare Paysage Agency, which worked with us on the project, made it possible to propose new outdoor spaces that meet all the uses of a kindergarten with quality of space, ecological management and biodiversity. The choice of the implantation was defined in coherence with the programmatic wishes while falling under a will to redistribute on the site the various entities of the school in connection with the external spaces. The project is thus based on a trichotomy of living spaces. First, we have the forecourt, which serves as an entrance to the entire school group. This reception area, designed as a real public space, favors meetings for the parents of the students, but also for the whole neighborhood. Its very rational design allows for many uses and activities. Next come the kindergarten building, which is a real place of life and learning. It is also a transitional space between the forecourt courtyard and the playground, a more enclosed and intimate space for the children. The school also serves as a meeting place at certain times of the day, as it hosts the canteen for the kindergarten and primary school children. Then, the playground is designed as a space of relaxation, but also of learning and exchange for the school children. Contrary to the forecourt, it takes an organic and natural form, highlighting the existing wooded heritage. Thus, this courtyard is distanced and isolated from all external nuisances by a generous vegetation and the building. The school project proposes a pivotal space that fits into the existing urban fabric in a humble way. It also fits into the natural dynamics of the agglomeration, green and blue framework. The project is thus based on the following development principles. The desire to reinforce the landscape porosities and continuities. The desire to preserve and create islands of freshness. Innovative stormwater management. To propose a frugal project with a differentiated management. Generate meeting spaces. Take into account and rely on the existing richness of the site and strengthen the existing tree heritage and recycle it as much as possible, chips, furniture, if it must be cut down. Propose a diversity of environments and finally design generous and flexible adaptable spaces. Architectural approach. The organization of the school's plan was designed with a view to compactness for economic and thermal reasons. It is in this logic that we chose to work with simple and controlled volumetrics, low and horizontal. The building is marked by a set of pronounced roofs, affirming the equipment from the public space. The long parcel of land allows for this dialogue between the school and the public space. The building is set back from the Rue du Colombier in order to create a distance and propose a generous square treated as a reception area for the school. This withdrawal from the urban alignment allows an architectural and landscape breathing space. The building is treated with the extension of these roofs, responding to the desired architectural vocabulary of the hut and the refuge. These overhangs also allow the project to benefit from a technical response to the problems of sunlight and protection against rain. At the same time a shelter against the weather elements, it protects the users and accompanies them inside the school. The architectural design of a school or any place of learning is a responsible act of citizenship. By citizen act, we mean the respect of the child in the sense of the approach which is made to him of its environment. The use of non-polluting materials is a fundamental principle. The choice of biosourced materials without VSE in short circuit resulting from a circular economy and with prefabricated elements in order to limit the nuisances of the building site seemed to us to be an obvious choice considering the various contextual and programmatic elements of the project. The choice of structural and facet materials was designed in accordance with the desired environmental, technical, thermal and sensitive approach. In order to meet the environmental challenges, the exterior walls are composed of straw insulation and structured by a wood frame. The choice of the facade was made on a dark vertical cladding that participates in the natural thermal functioning of the rooms. The dark choice of the color lets take advantage of the natural convection of the air and the natural heating of the rooms during the winter season. In summer, the facades will be protected from the sun by the roof overhangs and the vegetation of the site. We wanted to choose a biosourced material such as wood for the cladding for several reasons. 
It fits in with the natural environment desired for the project and participates in the architectural vocabulary of the hut, the refuge and the gabar imagined for this school facility. Its materiality also echoes other projects in the vicinity. It also participates in the environmental requirements of sustainable development desired for this project. A natural treatment with linseed oil on the cladding will provide a durable material limiting its maintenance and thus anticipating its aging. Large aluminum openings have been designed allowing, thanks to the orientation of the project, to take advantage of an optimal sunlight and to dynamize the traditional volumetry. The generous openings also offer qualitative views of the exterior spaces enhanced by the project's landscaper. Environmental approach The orientation towards biosourced materials, the use of renewable energy and natural ventilation systems for the classrooms on the first floor allow the building to achieve an E3C1 level carbon energy approach. In order to meet the challenges of use after delivery of the project, the design of the school was also focused, with all the design offices, EG Sacoustibel and Process Cuisine, on the issues of operation and maintenance to facilitate its uses and maintenance to users. The architectural choices were guided by a bioclimatic design in order to meet the comfort objectives for all users, children, teachers and extracurricular staff. The different architectural choices, whether it be the location of the project, the size of the openings according to their orientation, the choice of materials, or the roof overhangs and other solar protection, are examples of architectural responses to environmental and climatic issues. Dear listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's meet again next week for a new Kamdarshi in English. And until then, take care of yourselves. Goodbye. Thank you for listening. Thanks to Julien Rebourg, sound engineer, who is collaborating with us today. Don't forget to tune in to our previews on Instagram at Comdarchi Podcast. If you enjoy this podcast, don't hesitate to promote it by giving it five stars and a little comment on Apple Podcast or on your favorite podcast platform. And above all, subscribe to listen to all of our episodes for free. See you soon. And until then, take care of yourself.